Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, or perhaps welcome back if you have been with me before. On this channel, we are focusing on first chapter Fridays of all your favorite middle grade novels. In other words, you can come here and have the first chapter read aloud to most of the middle grade novels that you may be interested in reading with a focus on newer release novels. So today we are going to be reading Omar Rising by Aisha Saeed, or reading, I'm sorry, the first chapter of Omar Rising by Aisha Saeed. So this novel is actually the companion novel to a previous Aisha Saeed novel, Amal Unbound. So if you read that book and are familiar with the characters, you will be able to dive right on into this book. And if you didn't read that book, you don't necessarily need to have read it to be able to follow along with this book. It kind of follows different characters. There is just some slight overlap. Okay, so let's go ahead and read the excerpt or the synopsis on the inside front cover to give us a little bit of an idea what this book is going to be about. In this gripping companion to the New York Times bestseller, Amal Unbound, Amar shows the world that he's not going to accept being treated like a second-class citizen. When Omar gets a scholarship to the prestigious Galeb Academy, it's a game changer. It will give him, the son of a servant, a once in a lifetime opportunity for a better future. And his whole village is cheering him on. Omar can't wait to dive into his classes, play soccer, and sign up for the astronomy club. But those hopes are dashed when he learns first year scholarship students can't join clubs or teams. Instead, they must earn their keep by doing chores. Even worse, it turns out the school deliberately weeds out scholarship kids by requiring them to get grades that are nearly impossible. While Omar is devastated to find such odds stacked against him, the injustice of it all motivates him to try to do something else that seems impossible. Change a rigged system. All right, so that is a brief synopsis of this novel. And on that note, we are gonna dive right on into that first chapter. Teachers, if you are reading this first chapter Friday with your class, there is a link in the description where you can grab a handout to help them follow along. All right, chapter one. A gust of wind blows through the fields as my friend and I, friends and I wrap up our soccer game. It rustles through the neat rows of sugar cane growing behind us and sweeps over the orange trees in the distance. That does it, Fouad shouts. He kicks the soccer ball towards me. I'm never playing with either of you again, and I mean it this time. Don't be such a sore Zaki responds. It was a fun game. Only because you and Omar cheated, Fouad says, pointing at me. I tilt my head. Why is it whenever you win, it's a hard-earned victory, but if anyone else does, they're cheating? Admit it, Zaki says. Omar's last goal was epic. Fine, Fouad says grudgingly. It wasn't that bad. I'll take it, I grin. Coming from Fouad, half-hearted praise is basically a standing ovation. The soccer ball rolls until it settles next to my foot. As I kick it up to prop it under my arm, a wave of sadness washes over me. Fouad always vows never to play with us again, but this really is the last time I'll be kicking the ball with him. There have been so many lasts lately. My last walk to the market yesterday, my last time feeding the chickens this morning, and tonight will be my last time sleeping in my own bed. Tomorrow, everything will change. Tomorrow, I head to boarding school, the Gay Lib Academy for Boys, which means very soon my home my village, and scrimmage games like these will no longer be part of my ordinary everyday life. It's not that I don't want to go. I filled out the forms myself, asked my teacher for a recommendation, sorted vegetables at the produce stand, and cut sugar cane in the fields to save up for the application fee. When I got the call, my mother's eyes lit up like a thousand stars. She hugged me so tight, I thought she'd never let go. The son of a servant getting a scholarship to a place like Galeb, it would open up my world in ways I could only begin to imagine. Now, better things are actually within reach, like college and a job that earns enough money to buy a home for my mother and me. A real home with bedrooms and sofas and rugs, 
not a one room space where we're where we've strung up curtains that we pretend are walls. Galeb is a once in a lifetime opportunity to rewrite my destiny. Isn't that a mall? Zaki asks. He points toward the gravel road that slices through our village. Following his gaze, I brighten. Fuad and Zaki are good friends, but Amal is like family. My mother works for her parents and we live on their property behind their house. Born three days apart, we've never known life without each other. Your mother asked me to find you, Amal says when she approaches the two of her younger approaches with two of her younger sisters in tow. She said it was important. Time for your party, Amal's three-year-old sister sings out. Safa, Amal grimaces. But don't say anything, says four-year-old Rabia, placing a finger solemnly on her lips. It's a surprise. It's okay, I laugh, looking at Amal's stricken expression. Fozia auntie asked me for a list of my favorite sweets the other day, and Fawad let it slip when we started playing. No one around here can keep a secret except me, huh? Amal exclaims. Nope, never. I shake my head. Everyone's just excited for you, says Zaki. Tell me about it, Fouad rolls his eyes. My dad won't stop going on and on. Why can't you be more like Omar? You need to apply yourself. If I didn't like you so much, I'd probably hate you. I just got lucky, I flush. There's no lucky about it, Amal says. You earned it fair and square. Tomorrow will be amazing. Tomorrow, Saki repeats, but school doesn't start till next week. Galeb starts a week earlier, I remind him. So today really was the last soccer game? Fouad's expression falls. It's not like I'm moving to Jupiter, I say. I'll be back, winter break, summer. Yeah, Fouad interrupts, but it won't be. His voice trails off, but I know what he's going to say. And he's right. It won't be the same, not even close. So are you ready for the party? Amal teases as the six of us walk down the road toward her home. I tried all the sweets, Safa says. The latter was my favorite, Rabia chimes in. Thanks for taste testing, I tell them. When we reach the front door, Amal looks at me. Pretend to be surprised, okay? Please, everyone's so excited. I'll do my very best, I promise but it isn't hard to look surprised. As soon as Amal opens the door, my jaw drops. Her home is packed. Neighbors fill the main room and spill into the courtyard outside. Fairy lights are strung along the windows. The man of the hour, Fozia auntie sings out. She stands beside a table covered with trays and trays of sweets. Everyone claps and cheers. Wow, I blink, thank you. Great work, Amar. Amal's mother ruffles my hair. Always knew you could do it, says another neighbor. That's right, Fozzie Anti nods. It's not every day someone from our village heads off to one of the most prestigious schools in Pakistan. More like not ever, her daughter Hafsa chimes in. You're the first to get into a school like that, but you won't be the last. The crowd laughs. Oh, I shift. I don't... It's true, Amal's father Malik uncle smiles. You carry all of our pride with you, Amar. Carry it well. Looking at everyone's beaming faces, I'm filled with a warm glow. I thank my neighbors, then grab a plate and fill it with carroty, gadrella, yellow lattice, and sticky sweet jellabis. I apologize if I mispronounced those. So many desserts, I can't fit them all on my plate. I'll have to come back for seconds, maybe thirds. My friends and I settle at the edge of the open air courtyard as Banu and Shamu, the two farm kittens, beeline straight for me. Shamu slides up to me and purrs. Banu sniffs the sweets on my plate. Sorry, I say. They know I'm usually reliable for sneaking them leftovers. Pretty sure ca cats can't have jalbus. Fouad picks around the ladu. All right, who can catch this in their mouth? What do I get if I do, Zaki counters. Ultimate respect, I suggest. Fouad leans back and torpedoes the sweet at Zaki. It bounces against his nose before landing in his lap. We burst out laughing. I glance at them all refilling trays, the kittens at my feet. These people, 
this place. It's all I've ever known. Soon it will become a memory. I know I'm leaving to make a new life, a better one, but I hate how beginnings have to be tied to endings. That in order to start the next part of my journey, I'll have to leave all I know behind. All right, that is the end of chapter one. I really loved that last sentence. I'm just gonna read it again because it personally really kind of uh, hit home for me. I know I'm leaving to make a new life, a better one, but I hate how beginnings have to be tied to endings. That in order to start the next part of my journey, I'll have to leave all I know behind. All right, and as we know from the synopsis, Galeb Academy is not going to be what Omar is expecting. So I cannot wait to see how he navigates his future. All right. I hope you enjoyed today's read aloud. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. It would make me super happy. And uh, hopefully I see you again for another first chapter Friday in the future. See you later. Happy reading.